This um, meeting, I was able to present uh, the interim analysis of a um, randomized control trial that we did. Uh, we is the Study Alliance Leukemia Study Group in Germany. Um, and the trial tried to answer the question whether after a good response, after a standard 7 plus 3 induction, um, and a second induction is necessary for all patients, or whether we can depend the administration of a second indu uh, induction on the number of blasts uh, on day 15 of induction one. So the so-called donor double trial assessed this question in a randomized controlled fashion, meaning that patients newly diagnosed AML fit for intensive treatment aged 18 to 65 years of age received one cycle of standard 7 plus 3 induction chemotherapy. We took bone marrow on day 15 of this first induction. In patients with a good response defined by the presence of less than 5% blasts in this early marrow were randomized to receive either a second induction cycle, 7 plus 3, or no further induction. The primary endpoint of this trial was the CR rate at the end of induction, and secondary endpoints were survival endpoints, and of course, toxicity, tolerability. What we found is that after one standard 7 plus 3 cycle on day 15, it's around 45% of patients with a good response. So 45% of patients have less than 5% blasts. And uh, we randomized 270 patients to receive either double induction or no further induction. And the CR rates were uh, just 3% uh, apart. So um, if you look at the uh, CR rates in the patient population that was treated as randomized, 91.4% um, of patients had a CR after double induction and 88.2% of patients had a CR after single induction. Uh, this difference is 3.2% uh, only. It's formally, um, because of the confidence interval being rather wide, not a proof, statistically significant proof of non-inferiority of single over double induction. However, the, uh, the results are pretty suggestive already that in good responders after um, one induction, um, a second induction doesn't um, uh, doesn't add much more to the CR likelihood at the end of induction. If we look at the relapse-free survival in these two groups, we see a 10% difference in favor of double induction after three years. Um, however, this difference is not statistically significant and we have a very limited follow-up at the moment. So these numbers may change. However, if we look at the overall survival of all patients, we see that this small difference in relapse-free survival does not translate into an overall survival benefit or difference because all patients uh, have, the, have an identical overall survival, which is uh, around 70 74, 75% after three years. So um, if we analyze the subgroups, different genetic subgroups uh, and so on, um, we see no significant difference for either strategy double or single in, uh, induction either. So in conclusion, although we are not there yet to prove statistically significant that a single induction is non-inferior over double induction in patients with a good response after the standard 7 plus 3, um, the, the, there is a trend or the tendency is that um, it may be uh, possible to omit or to save or spare a second induction for these patients, whereas in patients 
patients with more than 5% loss on um, the early bone marrow assessment, we don't know based on the result of this trial. Um, the strategy, our strategy is to keep on enrolling in this trial. Um, the um, uh, the predefined patient number will be reached by um, the middle of next year. And so we hope that we will be able to present more um, mature results by the end of next year, maybe at the next ASH meeting or so.